So with 2020 quickly coming to a close, a lot of people are giving their opinions about how systems performed and how companies performed in the year of 2020. And one thing I'm starting to see kind of creep up online is that people are thinking the Nintendo Switch had a bad year in 2020. It wasn't quite up to their standards. It wasn't that great of a year. And some people even think, well, 2020 kind of sucked for the Nintendo Switch. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, why is that the case? Why are people thinking that? Why is this negative mindset surrounding the Nintendo Switch in 2020. So basically, this is my year-end review of the Nintendo Switch, the system itself, the games itself, and what Nintendo actually did in the year of 2020. So did the Nintendo Switch have a bad year in 2020? Did the system suck? To me, no, but we're gonna talk about why people are thinking that and sort of come to some sort of conclusions and maybe even convert some of the naysayers. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel if this is your first time coming, and let's talk about the Nintendo Switch in 2020 and do an end of year review. So obviously one of the things that is very contingent in this video of a system having a great or a bad year really comes down to one of the main things, and that to me is always first party games. We'll talk briefly about third party titles for the Switch, but the first party games are why people buy Nintendo platforms. They are what drive system sales, and when you look at the best selling games for Nintendo platforms, most of the time they are first party games. Now games are always subjective as far as whether or not you like the sort of game or not it really depends on the style of game it really depends on if you played the game before especially when it comes to nintendo stuff now the biggest game of 2020 for the nintendo switch was of course animal crossing new horizons a game that is one of the fastest selling video games of all time it's already right near the top of the charts for nintendo switch best sellers of all time it has sold an astronomical amount of copies sold more than games like spider-man and god of war on the playstation 4 did but this is a game that can be a bit polarizing because well it's not even really a game it's more of an experience a sort of life event sort of experience and if you aren't a huge fan of the Animal Crossing style of games or you've just sort of moved on for them like I have this game probably didn't really do all that much for you for me personally it did absolutely nothing I still have not bought it I still have not checked it out because I have just sort of moved on from Animal Crossing and Animal Crossing style games but to downplay the impact that this game had especially at the time it came out during really when people were starting to get put into lockdowns and COVID was really becoming a big thing. This game really saved a lot of people. It saved a lot of people as far as managing time was concerned. It gave them sort of an escape from the real world. So you have to respect that. Now, of course, there were a lot of re-releases for the Nintendo Switch as well, which once again becomes subjective stuff. If you've played these games before, your interest level might not be very high. We had games like Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, which of course is a great game, but me personally, I've played it on the Wii, I've played it on the 3DS, I don't really have the reason to want to play this game again. Pikmin 3 Deluxe also came out for the Nintendo Switch, which was a Wii U game, and I really just, I'm not a huge Pikmin fan or anything like that. The game seems serviceable enough if you've never played a Pikmin game before. This is a great way to do it on the best-selling Nintendo platform in recent memory, but still, for me, I just wasn't too super interested in it. But then you have games like Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which sort of transcend the re-release platform. Now, yes, I played Super Mario 64 on the Nintendo 64. I played Super Mario Sunshine on the GameCube. I played Super Mario Galaxy on the Wii, all when these games came out because, well, I'm old, but still, everyone can appreciate a Mario compilation. Now, you might not appreciate how the whole thing was done. There was limited hype with it. There wasn't all that much buzz right up until the game was releasing a month out. And of course, there weren't many enhancements done to these games, but still, these games sort of stand the test of time, in my opinion, at least two out of three. But beyond the compilations and beyond the heavy hitter of Animal Crossing, there still was some good stuff released for the Nintendo Switch. Paper Mario The Origami King was yet another surprise game, and really, I liked this game a lot more than I thought I was going to. The writing was very cleverly done, the combat was interesting enough to want to keep you somewhat involved in it, the boss battles were really fun as well, the world itself was vibrant and colorful and really fun to explore, and I think this is sort of, you know, it's weird to say, but almost a hidden gem of 2024 
the Nintendo Switch as far as first party titles are concerned because it sort of seems like it just kind of came and went. And then finally, we got Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity for the Nintendo Switch at the end of 2020. And for a lot of people, this sort of saved 2020 as a year. This game obviously takes influences from Breath of the Wild. It is a prequel in terms of story. And the gameplay is that classic Warriors gameplay that is just really fun to pick up and play. Sure, the game had some performance issues, which we covered in my review of it. But overall, it was a fantastic game, especially if you're a fan of Zelda and a fan of warrior style games, or maybe you just really liked Hyrule Warriors. Now, there were also smaller games like Clubhouse Games, Super Mario Brothers 35 for the Nintendo Switch as well. But as a whole, I think it was a solid, but maybe a bit of an uninspired year for the Nintendo Switch. When you compare it to years past, like, yeah, you didn't have that big Super Mario Odyssey, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild combination. You didn't have games like Astral Chain, Luigi's Mansion 3. But I don't think that this was necessarily a bad year for the system. It was just sort of a quieter year for the system. Now, that could just be because of a multitude of different things obviously one of the main impacting factors was covid i feel like this really screwed up nintendo's plans because of just how poor work from home conditions were in japan other companies were able to adjust much easier nintendo i mean still uses fax machines like legit they still use fax machines so this was sort of problematic on the third party side of games for the nintendo switch definitely a bit of a softer year depending on what you're looking for if you take a look at the best rated nintendo to switch games for 2020 as far as all games are concerned you'll see lots of third party games you'll see games like hades on there which has become a very popular game that i have just not played and you'll see a lot of older titles that were brought over to the nintendo switch for the first time games like the bioshock collection the borderlands collection of course you had xcom 2 burnout paradise remastered need for speed tons of indie titles but i think one of the standout games and a game that i'm glad ended up coming out even though it came out way too too late was doom eternal i just did a video on doom eternal a few days ago the nintendo switch version is seriously very very impressive it is some amazing stuff going on with nintendo switch technology that panic button managed to put such a high quality version of this game on the switch it's definitely a game worth checking out but overall you didn't really have any of those second party games or those third party exclusives for the nintendo switch that would really make a lot of gamers excited there was once again a lot of very solid stuff but I could sort of see why a lot of people are sort of having this negative mindset about the Switch in 2020. If you look at the game library, because if some of these games aren't really impactful to you, if you're not if you're not a fan of games like Animal Crossing, maybe you're a diehard Nintendo fan and you've played all of their games that they've re-released on the Nintendo Switch this year. Maybe you're a multi-platform owner and you've played all of these games before recently on other systems when it comes to third party stuff. I could see this year being a bit of a soft year, but if you have an experience these games before and you are a newer person either into Nintendo's ecosystem of video consoles which ecosystem I hate that word and I hate you Jason Lapine for putting it into my vocabulary or you don't have other consoles and the Nintendo Switch is your main platform you got a lot of great games and you got a lot of great versions of games now yes some of these games may have been a bit overpriced looking at you burnout remaster or paradise remaster Looking at you, Burnout Paradise Remastered, coming in at $50. Come on, EA, you know better than that. But overall, it was a solid year for the Nintendo Switch in terms of games. I don't care what anyone says. There was definitely games that everyone could enjoy. It's just, it didn't really have that sort of hype going around it that the other systems had, which we'll talk about a bit more in this video. The next area I want to talk about just very briefly because I don't necessarily think it's indicative of quality has to be sales. Now, when you look at things like music sales, some of the best selling artists of all time, like, well, they just suck. So I don't really think that sales are necessarily super indicative of quality. It's just more so what resonates with the mass audience. And you cannot deny the Nintendo Switch's sales in 2020. It was the best selling system overall. It was the best selling system month by month in pretty much every region that it is available in. The United States, Europe, Japan, the Nintendo Switch absolutely dominated in terms of sales. And I think that's sort of indicative because of the games that they released. A lot of these games, such as Animal Crossing New Horizons, really managed to spread out borders and make people who maybe weren't super interested in video games get interested in video games. The fact that you had the Nintendo Switch Lite, which was a budget-friendly option during COVID, definitely helped a lot as well. So I don't necessarily think sales are indicative of quality, 
but you can't deny the fact that the Nintendo Switch was the best selling console of 2020. And I mean, there has to be a reason behind that, doesn't there? The final thing I want to finish on when talking about Nintendo's 2020 has to be the area that for a lot of people was probably the most concerning sort of thing and I can sort of break down why that is but it's basically just about things like events, hype, and sort of lead up into what the future is for the Nintendo Switch. Now when you look at what 2020 brought to the table there was a lot of buzz about the next generation of consoles. The PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S both launched in 2020 and gamers sort of have a what have you done for me lately mentality they sort of forget things that happened earlier in the year to be fair 2020 has been a very very long feeling year for a lot of people so i sort of understand that but when you look at sort of the latter half of 2020 it seems like everyone was talking about the playstation 5 it seems like everyone was talking about the xbox series x of course both of these consoles are now available and people are hyped for the next generation of consoles when you look at what nintendo did in terms of presentations in 2020 it they really didn't do a whole lot to sort of combat what the other systems were doing because, well, they don't have new hardware to introduce. The lack of a proper Nintendo Direct was definitely a very strange thing. Sure, we got third-party Directs, we got Nintendo Direct Minis, which sort of signifies that the Nintendo Direct format isn't necessarily one and done or all gone or anything like that, and we'll probably be making an appearance once again, but you never really had that huge presentation to sort of combat what the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X were doing in terms of their presentations, system unveilings, game unveilings, controller unveilings, features unveilings. Nintendo was definitely a bit quieter in that aspect. But you know what? I think that was actually the right decision because when you look at it, what can you really do to combat new hardware if you're not introducing new hardware yourself? Software will only get you so far and your software is going to appeal to your core audience that you already have. Things like the Paper Mario, the Origami King announcement, things like the Super Mario 3 the All-Stars announcement, things like the Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity announcement. These were all pretty much out of nowhere. Huge surprises for Nintendo fans and huge surprises for the gaming community in general. You didn't have a notion that, oh wow, there's a big event coming up about Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity to unveil what this game is or anything like that. No, you had that element of surprise. And I feel like some people downplay what the element of surprise really does to bring people into video games and bring people as far as knowledge just concerned because now you got everyone hyping it up you got everyone talking about it whereas things like the PlayStation 5 event things like the Xbox Series X event you knew when these were coming you knew when to prepare for these things with surprise announcements you don't really have that option you don't have the ability to prepare so I think Nintendo played it smart this year when it comes to their events even if you had the biggest event talking about all the software and whatnot people are still gonna be talking about the next generation of consoles there's no sort of way around it but come early 20 2021 when that new car smell is worn off the honeymoon phase is over with these systems that's when you need to talk about your video games that's when you need to talk about new potential hardware now we made a video talking about the nintendo switch in 2021 and why i think it's going to be a very big year for the system make sure you guys go check it out so in conclusion did the nintendo switch suck in 2020 did nintendo have a weak year no, I don't think they did. Even if you take the sum of all the parts, you say, you know, these games didn't appeal to me. I've played all these games on the PlayStation 4. I played all these games before on the previous Nintendo consoles that they released on. I don't like Animal Crossing. I don't like any of the first party titles. That's really just subjective and that's just really down to your taste as a gamer. I think there was at least one or two first party Nintendo Switch titles that released this year that should appeal to you no matter if you're a casual gamer or a super hardcore gamer. Sure, it was a weird year for the Nintendo Nintendo. They were definitely quiet in times when maybe they shouldn't have been quiet, but overall, it was a solid year. When you compare it to years past, maybe it was the weakest year out of all. If you look at the Chicago Bulls and all their championship rings during the Jordan era, you could say that one year was their weakest year out of all of them, but I mean, at the end of the day, they still won a championship ring. System sales, video game sales were all through the roof for Nintendo. So even if the game library didn't really resonate with you, you can't deny the fact that the system was a success. And I feel like success indicates how your year ended up doing. If I made a bunch of videos this year that I was really proud of and I thought they did really well in terms of visual stuff and whatnot, but no 
nobody watched them, would that be a success? I don't think so. I personally wouldn't feel successful with that. So I think overall, Nintendo had a solid year. It wasn't the most spectacular year, but it was good enough to get the job done. And really, in the COVID era, with the work from home conditions from Nintendo, what more could you really ask for? So that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this topic. Be sure to let me know what you think of it in the comments section down below. What you thought of Nintendo's 2020, areas they could, they could have improved on in the year, and what you're looking forward to in 2021. Like I said, we made a video talking about the Nintendo Switch in 2021, what things I sort of expect to see. So make sure you guys go check that out. Check out other videos on the channel as well. If you are new, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. And as always, guys, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.